Hey everyone, Andre here along with Joey, Tom, and the very special guest being Kat Bergensen to celebrate Metroid's 35th anniversary as of today, at least in Japan. That's right, Japan exists in the future of course and, is a, and it has now officially been 35 years since Metroid released on the Famicom disc system, I believe, if I remember correctly. So yeah, that'd be fun for us to get together and discuss the Metroid series in its entirety, you know, from the beginning to the end. And uh, I'll be curious to see what all our experiences are with the series, and uh, you know maybe our favorite memories, and if we've even played them all. Because apparently, one of the biggest fans here hasn't finished all the Metroid games, <laughs> including the wow, one. Wow, Tom! <laughs> Tom! <laughs> all right, so 35 years of Metroid. Uh, Danny, since you're our guest here, let's start off with you. What is your overall, uh, what's your overall experience with Metroid, and how does it feel for you to? to be at this point now where, where we have this famous series that's now at, you know reached the same milestone that Mario and Zelda have, which is pretty impressive, and of course, Nintendo barely acknowledges. <laughs> <laughs> of course, yeah, no, it, uh, they're once again leaving it to us fans to uh, do all the marketing for them, but um, yeah, my overall experience, I guess, I, I actually, my first Metroid game was Prime 1 of all, of all games. Wow. Uh, before that, I, I was ignorant to the franchise, except for maybe Samus being in Smash 64. Uh, but that launching point, uh, it took me a little longer to get into it. I loved that game. It was an amazing game. And then, of course, Prime 2, Prime 3 comes out. And so after that point, I kind of had to self-educate and go back. And, you know, I went on the Wii, the Wii eShop back in the day and bought Super Metroid for 8 bucks. And then that was it for me. I was sucked in. I bought every single game and just, yeah, absolutely um, fell in love with the series to the point where I would sort of put it in my, like, top two franchises just below maybe Zelda uh, of all-time favorite games so it's uh, it's it's one of the game franchises that I find myself aside from Zelda of course uh, revisiting the most out of any other franchise uh, that that I play it's it's just like one of those games uh, like series I can just sit down over a weekend play through Zero Mission or Super Metroid get my fix you know because if I go too long I start craving it like some sort of weird like chocolate fondue uh, so <laughs> it's, yeah, it's uh, it's it's just uh, one of those things that it's it's, it's kind of hard to describe, uh, just how special the the series is. Uh, yeah, that's a terrible answer, but <laughs> I'm, I'm sticking with no, it. I think it was, I think it was a, a very suitable answer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, how about you, Joey? You are our, you are our resident Metroid super fan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tell us your experience uh, with the series. Yeah, so uh, I did get into the series actually uh, later than Metroid Prime 1. It was actually Metroid Prime 2 when I got into the series. I was just at Target, and I was like, hey, that's a game. I'll buy it. And um, and I remember it watching like this GameCube promotional DVD all the time uh, before I even bought a GameCube. And I watched a lot of the Metroid Prime stuff they had on there. So I didn't notice the Big Fat 2 on the cover of Metroid Prime 2, but I still bought it and played it anyway. And then my story is much like Daniel's. I then played Metroid Prime 1, and then Prime 3, and then I went on the Wii uh, Virtual Console Shop and I bought the 2D ones. Uh, but I didn't really get into the 2D ones until like the Wii U era, where I decided, hey, it's about time I actually finish these games. And I loved Super Metroid to death. That game's atmosphere is just, it's a super unique Super Nintendo game. And to me, it's like the best 2D Metroid, and a lot of people disagree with me and say that that goes to, like, Zero Mission or Metroid Fusion, and I'm like, no, for me, atmosphere, like, trumps everything, and mm -hmm. that's why Super Metroid's, like, my favorite 2D game, but I'm way more of a 3D Metroid fan, like the Prime games. Those are the ones I replay constantly, like, every year I just say, all right, it's time for my annual Prime Trilogy playthrough. <laughs> so I do that, and I'm just super excited for Prime 4, and I'm super excited for Dread, and you know, even if Nintendo's not really, I don't know, doing anything for the anniversary, um, they're releasing a game, <laughs> and that's good <laughs> enough for me this year. Yeah, and they have actually, they have at least mentioned the 35th anniversary, which yes. is nice. And yeah, and it's not just a game, it is a major installment in the 2D series, which we haven't had in... <laughs> How many years, Joey? <laughs> Nineteen. <laughs> My <laughs> God. I'm sure we'll be talking more about Dread soon enough. Tom, how about you? What is your uh, experience with Metroid? Were you one of the few uh, here who didn't start with the 3D games? <laughs> yeah, so, uh, I guess surprisingly, uh, I started from the very beginning with the original Metroid. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, I guess I bought it used, probably for like $7 or something. And uh, it was a very hard game 
It's a lot. In a way, <laughs> it was no like, map. yeah, no map. Yeah. It was like the original Zelda. I remember like drawing out my own little map uh, with, you know, paper and pencil. Uh, but you know, original Zelda is a lot about just exploring, seeing uh, what you can find. And I do love that sort of game. So I did like that with Metroid. But the save system was like t writing down 20 characters. <laughs> I remember a time when uh, I finally be Kraid. Then everybody was like, can I play? I'm like, sure, just write down the save file. Because so I had to go out, and he completely like, wrote it wrong. <laughs> it's all that <laughs> oh. progress. That's like the wrong. modern equiv equ equivalent of like a sibling deleting your save file. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. And um, in that game, though, the big thing for a lot of people was seeing how, you know, Samus wasn't your stand wasn't a man. You know, Samus was a woman at the end. But uh, I just... I forget how I figured it out, but I just knew from the Justin Bailey cheat code that it was. So for me, mm -hmm. it's like, oh yeah, just whatever. Like, it was no big surprise. <laughs> and uh, a lot of my other big experiences were with Metroid 2. So when I got a Game Boy, I got that, and I would always play it on vacation. Uh, that was also an extremely tough game, digging down through the planet. And uh, that took me a few years to beat. And of course, I beat the boss in the hard way, not the smart way at the very end. <laughs> uh, missed out on the Super Nintendo era during the time because I didn't have a Super Nintendo. And uh, I would say, for me, highlights of the series are Metroid Prime 1 with the just the fantastic exploration of that world. Uh, I almost like the just shooting regular enemies more than the space pirates themselves, I would say. And mm -hmm. uh, Metroid Fusion. Those are great highlights for me. So that's why I'm looking forward to Metroid Dread. It's going to build on the fusion kind of being chased and hunted down. That's man, why I'm playing through Metroid Fusion right now. Sorry, go ahead, Joey. Yeah, man, I'm just saying the NES era was an ungodly time for video <laughs> games. It was great, but also you had crap like that, like those really long uh, passwords and just like the cryptic... That's why I haven't beaten Metroid or Metroid 2. I've... They're remakes, on the other hand. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like going back to the first Metroid and Metroid 2 is just really hard because there's no map, there's... You have to figure out like the most cryptic stuff. It's it's a mess. I, I remember doing things like spending 20 minutes because uh, I didn't find the power up yet. Going, oh, maybe I can uh, bomb jump all the way up like three screens or something like that. And, like you know, kind of <laughs> getting two screens up. Like ah, oh, so close. <laughs> oh man, seriously. That's yeah. Brutal. It is one of the things that's hard, that's hard to go back to, but keep in mind, very few games back in the day like had any kind of save function, so having a password feature was actually a pretty big uh, revelation at that time. Yeah. Um, but for me, I think my experience mirrors more... It, it's both, it has a little bit of toms, but more of the others here, it seems, where I, I was introduced to Metroid on the NES at like a friend's place or someone's house, and I remember just like not even understanding it. I'm like, this is this is this is too much for my little brain. I can't <laughs> handle it. Um, so I largely missed out on the 2D Metroids up and or on Metroid entirely up until I think it was also Metroid Prime. That was the first Metroid game I actually fully played through. And uh, and actually, I think even that one took me a while to, to fully beat. But anyways, I played the most of that game. Loved it. Thought it was great. Uh, and I think it's probably still, for me, my overall favorite Metroid game of the entire series. But since then, I have gone back and started replaying uh, most of the older ones. I since I finally beat Super Metroid just a few years ago. The, for whatever reason, I've had trouble getting into the 2D games compared to the 3D ones. And even with Super Metroid, like I'll start it, I'll get a, I would get a few hours in and then drop it. But I finally, I finally decided, like you know what, this game is, is widely acclaimed by almost everyone. I've got to sit down and beat it. So I finally did that a couple years ago, and I got stuck on that stupid. On the, I say stupid, it's great. On the, <laughs> the tunnel puzzle, like where you, you had to blow oh, up the glass yes. container. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so when I figured, I think I figured that out without looking it up. I'm like, oh my god, that's genius. <laughs> um, and uh, then since I, after that went on to, I think, Zero Mission. And I moved on to Fusion immediately after. But I'm like, I realized I was bringing myself out on Metroid, so I dropped it. And only now, finally going back to Fusion and playing through that. And, uh, I'm having a, and I'm having a pretty good time with it so far. I have uh, I like some things it does. I have some issues with it as well, which I'm sure we'll get to. Uh, but yeah, overall, um, yeah, I think Metroid is is a really neat series, um, even if I didn't quite get into it until the 3D installment, which uh, which is something that I think really like took an awesome like formula and made it work in 3D to a degree that I would argue works better in 3D than it does in 2D. But I know there are many out there who would disagree with me. That's totally fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm the I'm with you there. I'm like, I much prefer the Prime games over the 2D ones, but both are just great in their own right. Like, I yeah. wouldn't say 
necessarily say one is better than the other. They're just both really good at what they do. And, like, Metroid Prime is, like, my favorite game of all time. And it, it, part of it is because, like, they really knew what made Super Metroid great. Right. And they somehow perfectly translated it into 3D. Like, it's it's wild how well they did. It was effectively what Ocarina of Time was to Zelda, where it took like an established template with a link to the past, even effectively having two different worlds, and bringing that into 3D, and it worked great. And uh, that shouldn't be, you know, uh, undersold. Like some people will write off like games like that. As, oh, it's just the same game in 3D. It's like that's a huge accomplishment. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and there's a lot more work that goes into that than just translating things. You know, you can't just translate it one to one. You have to figure out how to adapt uh, those things into 3D. But um, before we get too deep into uh, the whole Metro Prime th side of things, uh, who all has actually finished Metroid on NES? Is it just you, Tom, or has anyone else? Oh, uh, all right. One time. One time ever, and I said, <laughs> never again! <laughs> I, I, I will play Zero Mission uh, repeatedly. I'll play Super Metroid, Samus Returns. I'll play Fusion and the Prime games repeatedly. I beat Metroid on NES one time, and I said, I will not put myself <laughs> through this agony again. It was more like a, I've got to do this, like, out of some weird right. uh, self-obligation thing. But mm -hmm. honestly, the game is 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 so brutal uh, to the point where I just stop having fun. And uh, mm -hmm. that sh I, I feel like when playing a game, I'm totally fine with challenge. I love challenge. Uh, I love to be pushed to my limits in games, but not to the point where I stop to have fun you know that that should never i should never hit that breaking point um you know so so i think part of i mean a lot of those issues of course were fixed in zero mission just you know the the sameness of the rooms the level design you know but the biggest thing is the fact that when you die you don't start off with full health when you respawn and that's the biggest b like the fact that you start off with 30 hit points no matter how many energy tanks you have that'd be like dying in zelda and respawning with one heart even if you've got a full two rows, <laughs> like it, it oh, makes man. no sense. Well, time to shoot all these uh, respawning enemies for 10 for minutes like, or yeah. so. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's mm -hmm. thankfully much easier on Switch or if you have the NES uh, Mini because you can use save states and things like that, But uh, which is how I actually was able to get through it the first time was on the um, mm -hmm. NES Mini, abusing save states <laughs> <laughs> for that reason, But because uh, I never had it on the NES itself. So... Yeah, but one time, and I think I think I'm fine not going back to it. <laughs> I'm sure there's people who are working on Metroid games right now who've never even beaten that first game. Like, I remember watching an interview with Eiji Aonuma, you know, the the producer of Zelda games. Now he can't he can't even beat Zelda two. So like, I at yeah. that point I stopped feeling bad about games I can't beat. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Metroid is, I think, is one of those games that you kind of had to be there for at the time. Mm -hmm. It's one that doesn't quite hold up as well as, say, Super Mario Brothers does on the you know, NES, um, or even the original Legend of Zelda, which I actually mm -hmm. hadn't also finished myself. Got close, never quite finished it. But yeah. I will say, Metroid is one of those games I do kind of, like, for the same reason perhaps as you uh, wanted to, Danny, like, I do want to go back and try to finish out one of these days, just, just because it is the first game of the series, and obviously without it, we wouldn't have any, any of the others. Mm -hmm. um, and it is interesting to explore, you know, what the game did uh, that was new and novel at the time, which was pretty much, you know, <laughs> most everything. Obviously not the not so much the gunplay, but the way you actually navigate the world. Um, I believe one of the um, uh, directors had said that they were going for, like, a very free-working environment. And mm -hmm. uh, that's what they did. Like, they kind of, like, took this open-world idea of, like, say, Zelda, but in a, you know, side-scrolling landscape and just made it massive. And it felt... I mean, I imagine it felt epic at the time. I mean, the other Metroids do as well. But especially mm -hmm. with having no map, you <laughs> having yeah. no idea like where you really are in the world relative to at other points of the game, unless you're mapping out yourself or have a really good mental image of it. Um, I can only imagine like how much uh, you know how much replayability there was in that, assuming you could stick with it. But just also you know how yeah, just how like uh, broad and um, you know like epic that kind of felt. You know, it, it, it must have felt like you were really. Uh, charting your way through this world more so than uh, probably any other Metroid since, um, mm -hmm. and that's kind of cool. That is something that they've they've stepped back. You know, Super Metroid, of course, uh, introduced a map, arguably definitely for the better. Uh, but the, since then, they've even got they've even been the maps even more refined. Like in uh, I think it was in Zero Mission where they even have not only is there a map now, which is a remake of the original NES and Famicom games, but now it shows you the the individual doors on the map, which even Super Metroid didn't do, and of course that carried into the 3D games as well. Um, 
so yeah, I mean, I think it's... Oh, and also, of course, the whole upgrade system. You know, again, something a little bit Zelda-ish, but even taking to an extreme where you have this massive world, but you don't just get power-ups on a limited-time basis. Uh, these are permanent upgrades, and they change how you can go through the world, and that was a big, that was a big deal at the time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I liken... Um... I, like, I, with Metroid, I admire what it does. It's just hard to go back to it on the NES after so many games did it better. But uh, I, I liken playing through a Metroid game like if uh, you're playing through a Zelda game and you've got a, a dungeon that you have to go through start to finish, except the whole game is that dungeon. And rather than keys that you find in the dungeon to unlock the doors, those keys are extensions of your own abilities as the player. Um, and so it's like having... Um, I've made a joke of like this in, in a video of mine, but having a tangled headphone cord, you can't just prod at the middle and hope to get anywhere with it. You have to kind of find the right place and still like start slowly picking it apart. And there's this weird satisfaction to that when everything kind of falls into place and you finally pull that cord apart and you're like, wow, okay, here it is, one long stretch. Uh, it looks like a jumbled mess at first, but it's actually one straight line that you go through it and it's 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 like this. There's this really uh, really satisfying payoff at the end for that. So. It's a uh, it's a very special series for kind of establishing that that idea on a larger scale than than Zelda had done, which was in open world, but in these isolated uh, dungeon experiences. Yeah, that's a great point. Something I actually really enjoy about Metroid's exploration is, uh, particularly in Super Metroid, I think, because I, I think I might owe that to the fact that you can't see where the doors are. Is it mm -hmm. almost feels like a crossword puzzle or maybe pit cross, where right. you have a yeah, you're like you're filling in the blanks and trying to figure out, you know. How, how, you know, what goes where, and, you know, once you start filling it in, it starts making a little bit more sense. And, yeah, you get that really great sense of satisfaction once you figure out, like, how to get into a room and you know, how that connects to other rooms as you're slowly progressing your way through the map and unlocking the map as you do so. Yeah, there's, there's just something, like, very in, innately satisfying about that, which arguably the original Metroid didn't have because it didn't have a map, you know? So I think, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I think it, it, that it might be a formula that Super Metroid, I think, might possibly nail more than the others because I remember when I was playing through the game, you know, for the, you know, finishing it for the first time a couple years ago, was I actually did find some satisfaction in knowing there's a room nearby. I have no idea how to get into it because there's no doorways. So I had to, like, circumnavigate all around it, like, chipping away at the walls, <laughs> trying, like, how do I get into this freaking room? And, uh, yeah, it's, it's just really, it is satisfying once you finally, you know, figure that out. Whereas... Uh, uh, playing through Fusion right now, it feels a little bit simpler. You know, it's pretty easy to figure out, like, you know, when there's probably a secret entrance in the wall and you just bomb along and then find something. Um, and I feel like I'm able to more, like, I'm able to more, uh, almost turn my brain off a little bit more for that game compared to some of the other Metroids because it's it just kind of, you know, not that I'm not thinking about some things, but it just feels like a little bit more gamey, I suppose, if that makes sense. It's a little bit more expe expected as to what you're supposed to do at points. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think I'll have to beat Metroid at some point, but right now it's just like I'm sticking to Zero Mission if I'm going to replay like the first Metroid. It's yeah, it's um, it's tough, but it's more playable than Metroid Two, which might make a good segue <laughs> to Metroid Two because that's the game I've the Metro game I've played the least. Because every I time I yep. you don't even have it. Yeah, you don't not even on the 3DS because you can get on the 3DS. I probably but, should. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's. Uh, it's even more cryptic than Metroid 1 because it's all black and white. Um, there's just no good sense of direction. I always get lost. And I think I, every time I try and start Metroid 2, like 30 minutes in, if that, I'm just like, I am done. Like, I can't. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I'm sorry. It doesn't help that Samus is huge in that game. Yes. She's, her sprite yeah. is massive. So you can see even less of the world around you already on a tiny black and white screen. Which must have made it even more challenging to remember when the heck, you know, where you are and what you're doing at any given time. Mm hmm. For sure. Has anyone else, has anyone here beaten Metroid 2 at all? Yeah. Yeah. I, oh. I just. I think Tom's the real fan here. I know. I think yeah. so. the originals. I mean, I haven't played Federation Force. I'm sorry, but. I... Oh, me either. <laughs> Don't worry. I have but, uh, it. And I, yeah. The Metroid 2, it does have the corridor with lava that, you know, sinks down, which kind of made it easier, but the areas were so huge that offshoot it, it didn't really matter. And playing it on the original Game Boy at the time, I mean, it's hard to see. It's almost like looking through a foggy visor. Well, Just, that, that's actually pretty accurate of Metroid Prime. Yeah. <laughs> that's dead on. <laughs> that's true. And just getting the spider ball and just hugging corridor walls forever. Like, I remember climbing ceilings forever, and there'd be like one enemy up there, like, oh, I guess this, is, this isn't the way. And a real uh, 
<laughs> feeling of being scared almost this time as the Metroid's got bigger and bigger going down and it's like you see the shell like uh oh it's gonna be a step up and the kind of Metroid scream that probably sounds horrible on the Game Boy but uh, <laughs> that's, that was quite memorable when they appeared but just really tough it took me I probably at least three times of restarting until I finally beat it over like multiple years <laughs> oh man Damn. That's impressive. <laughs> mm -hmm. I can only imagine how impressive Metroid 2 must have been at the time. For as frustrating as, as, as I'm sure it was, and it probably is even more frustrating to go back to these days, like how Metroid NES is, mm -hmm. um, but even more so. But seeing a game of like the scale of Metroid on the NES, like translated to the Game Boy, uh, fairly faithfully, and I mean, ap apparently, I think even like more impressive in some respects, like some of the powers you get, I think were yeah. introduced in that game. Um, they're famous now in the series. And uh, and also like like clearly there was a really good idea in there because it's they it, was, it has since been remade uh, in Samus Returns and a lot of people really love that game um, which actually is one of the few that I haven't really played myself either so Metro Two yeah I've largely avoided I need to fix that <laughs> um, so yeah it, it's cool to see you know, the, the ideas of Metro Two like realized in a more modern way much like L Zero Mission made you know uh, the original Metroid more accessible to everyone else. Um, but yeah, I, I think Metro 2 is a game I would actually like to try and play more of myself, just to see if I can actually beat it. But I got to beat Metro <laughs> 1 first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, but uh, I guess we could talk about Samus Returns if we want to go chronologically. Um, Doesn't matter. I mean, yeah, that was... <laughs> nothing matters. This, this is all... All bets are off on this discussion. But uh, yeah, that's... Um, I regrettably have only beaten that game once, uh, because it's actually really long. Like, it's a really long Metroid game. It's... I think the first time took me like 13 hours, which is... But I also did a completionist run, which the game does make it very easy to do a completionist run of, because it labels things very easily, uh, the map is more user-friendly, and uh, when you when you get the baby Metroid, spoiler alert, when you get the baby Metroid at the end, it unlocks more of the map, and it's just like, okay, well now I have to 100% it, because you're giving me all this other stuff to do, and... Yeah, I think it was a really good remake. I know a lot of people will always do the whole AM2R versus Samus Returns debate, which I still haven't played AM2R, but I might. But it's still a really good 2D Metroid, and it was it was a great little breather for uh, Metroid Dread, which we didn't even know was coming out until this year. So, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Um, I don't have much to say to that. But uh, one point I want to touch on before we get too deep into... Uh, breaking down Metroid games is as uh, Tom brought up, brought up earlier but there's also one of like the first uh, examples we have like of a really strong female protagonist um, yeah. especially one who isn't there primarily just for uh, uh, fan service yeah exactly mm -hmm. although you know the 100% reward is a little bit <laughs> well, <laughs> it, it did the age particularly well um, but no I mean they were apparently the developers said that they were inspired by uh, I think Alien and Aliens or you know the series yes and uh, you can, I think you can definitely see that. You know, another movie that is famous for having a powerful or strong female lead uh, with Ripley, which it sounds a lot like Ridley, by the way. Well, you know, <laughs> the director of Alien is Ridley Scott. Yeah. So I think exactly. they, there we go. Yeah. I think I think that's like confirmed. Like they named Ridley after Ridley Scott. So yeah. That's yeah. Great. Very. And you could even say like Metroid Fusion was inspired off of the worst Alien movie, Alien oh. Resurrection, because <laughs> Samus is kind of reborn in that game. Like Ripley was, but we don't talk about Alien Resurrection. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even even playing through Fusion now, the, the the wall creatures that like shoot out like have a very alien like vibe to them. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't think, I mean, even I don't fully under, like, I don't think even I can fully appreciate, like, how, how interesting or surprising it must have been to, like, get through the entirety of Metroid, which must have taken people months back in the day, I mean, for most people, I imagine, at least, and, uh, the entire time you think it's a man, because, of course, it's a space marine, uh, the instruction manual even... Uh, you know, and that's how they were portrayed typically in you know media at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, even the instruction manual refers to Metroid or to Samus. <laughs> I almost made that mistake. To Samus <laughs> <laughs> as as uh, in using masculine pronouns. And they had to, at the end of the game, you find out how much removed. Oh crap! We were playing a you know she uh, she was a woman the entire time, and that must have been a pretty surprising deal. Which is something that you you know that's a twist you only I can't say twist you know like a reveal you can only have once you know. And I I, I wonder how what people were thinking in that time <laughs> playing mm -hmm. it for the first time you know so yeah, like your if, expectations um, 
if that were to happen now, the the Twitter blow up would be astronomical <laughs> of all the, the very angry people. Uh, oh, could you imagine a Master Chief took off their helmet? And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, like the, the fanboys with Master Chief. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah the reaction yeah, would be very lines. different these days. For real. Yeah, it's it's nuts, and it's that's part of what makes Metroid so iconic. Uh, is like, I don't know if I could be wrong. I think I don't know if uh, Samus is technically the first uh, female video game protagonist. Uh, or... Miss Pac-Man. Mr. Oh, duh. Yeah, Joey, yep. the most iconic character of all time. <laughs> What's the matter with you? <laughs> Wouldn't it be Miss Pac Woman? I always loved that naming scheme, <laughs> Miss Pac Man. But yeah, Metroid's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's just it's just really cool. Like it just it, it subverted your expectations, and it kind of just pointed out how, uh, in a subtle way, it's like yeah, you're sexist for thinking it was a man the entire time, unless you read yeah. the Manual, which we were misled. But anyways, <laughs> <laughs> point is, women can be space marines, space. Uh, uh, exterminators too, I guess. Whatever Samus is, a uh, uh, space bounty hunter of yeah, sorts. Hunter, who, exactly. We never see her like catch any targets, though. Like, no, just 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 commit genocide mostly. Yep, spatial <laughs> genocide. <laughs> like that was only Metroids. two times. Come on. <laughs> she went back in time. Only committed genocide twice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. she right. went. She went back in time. Rumor has it she went back in time on Earth and killed all the dodos. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. <laughs> You know, to be fair, I did not. Uh, I did not save the animals in uh, Super Metroid. I didn't even realize that was a thing you could do until uh, after I beat it and read about I didn't, it. I didn't know this either. What the heck? What? <laughs> I, you gotta go actually, save them. Otherwise, Fusion is not canon. <laughs> you, well, I'm, that's, I, I was a little bit annoyed playing through Fusion yesterday because I got to the room on the spaceship where you see these animals. I'm like, wait a second. I didn't save you guys in Super Metroid. How are you here? It broke the con it broke this whole story in my mind. <laughs> no, I'm oh, joking. No. <laughs> um, I thought that was a cool little callback though. And I love that you can save the animals, and it doesn't really do anything in Super Metroid. I think it gives you like a little extra scene at the end of the game. Yeah, or something. it gives you one extra pixel on the screen where the planet explodes. Spoilers on the screen where the planet explodes, you get that one extra pixel flying off, off from the planet, and that's it. Nice. Good that's for the them. Only difference. Good for them. You know what? It really, it really is just like a morality test. Like, are you a good person or not? And <laughs> that's how you can tell. <laughs> But yeah, Super Metroid is uh, often held up as the high, the high mark in, if not just the 2D line of Metroid games, the entire series. A lot of people still talk, pray, you know, still speak of the games, uh, or still speak praise of the game to this day. And that's for good reason. Like, it took what was introduced in Metroid 1 and, Metroid, and to a lesser degree Metroid 2 and uh, just made it work. Like, it has an incredibly strong level design. Um, it has, you know, the world map that helps you navigate that world design it has cool powers um it has good controls like just a great moody atmosphere it really drives home like the sense of isolation that uh the metro theory series is kind of famous for but i think i would argue it's perhaps best uh exemplified in this game and yeah it just really kind of it's just really firing on pretty much all cylinders and it, especially at the time it was made uh just create this like really you know, uh, uh, epic feeling, world exploration, and isolate sense of isolation that few games have quite captured in the same way. Like, we've seen a ton of Metroidvania since. Some, I argue, are better than Super Metroid, but I think there hasn't been a game quite like Super Metroid, even in the Metroid series, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for its time, Super Metroid was on a whole other level. Like, like this was when most games were like um they didn't try to really create a certain atmosphere there were some games sure but super metroid came out and it was just unlike any other nintendo game i would say nintendo published game and developed game um they it was like the game starts off and there's dead human bodies in a lab and like i think you see some blood in there i'm not quite sure if i recall correctly but it was just super dark, super unsettling. Ridley's hiding in plain sight in the shadows, and then he just screams, and then you're like, ah, oh my god, and then you just shoot it. And the whole game has that same atmosphere for the, the re up until the very end. And let's not even talking about some of the straight up creepy environments uh, and some very scary bosses as well. It was, it was 
it wasn't exactly a horror game, but it was definitely it was definitely a creepy one with some with a very unsettling atmosphere throughout the entire game, and that's why I think it's like the best two D Metroid. It may not have like uh, I think some two D Metroids have had better bosses since then, uh, maybe some better power ups too. But man, for its time and like I would say this is the two D Metroid that's like above the rest of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's one of those games that like there's I would say only a handful of games that I would I would categorize as just like pure amazing just works of art first and then a game second. Uh, I would put like Earthbound and is one of them and and Super Metroid. It's it's one of those games that's just this more of this visceral uh, creepy atmospheric experience first and then a game second. Like the game is just the backdrop for all this all this atmospheric stuff they're doing and. Uh, I don't think any other game in the series has captured that isolation as well as Super Metroid. And I think it's because part of it is is uh, the feel of Samus herself. She's a lot more floaty in that, and there's a lot more of this sort of melancholic feel in the atmosphere that kind of pairs with that less snappy, super quick jumping around. Um, I think the sort of snappier actions of games like Fusion and Zero Mission lend themselves more to the uh, sort of action-packed romps that those games are, which are not bad. I, I, I think the there's a lot of value in that too but super metroid uh just manages to capture this this feeling and it just sits in your gut you know after you play it it's one of the few games that i finished and then immediately start a new file right after <laughs> like usually <laughs> i have to like give it some time to simmer you know after but now that game i i boom i like i like played it i remember playing it every weekend for like five weeks in a row um just starting a new file and playing it over and over when i first played it and uh, it, it's just, there's this indescribable sort of magic, well, indescribable, we're trying to describe it, but <laughs> this, this sort of magical, uh, um, not in the fun, pleasant magical way, but like just this this sense of eeriness that, that's uh, in all of the environments. And the music in particular, I think is, is the best that the series has to offer, in my opinion. It has the, the best mm-hmm. soundtrack. It's, it's um, And it's got the perfect balance of sort of the upbeat sort of themes of like Upper Brinstar, and the sort of you get to lower Brinstar, it becomes a little more melancholy. Lower Norfair is just like intensity all the way through, yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's it's just got this perfect balance. And all of those tracks, while while balancing their sort of levels of of intensity and energy, also are are just incredibly atmospheric uh, as well. So it's it's just. It's just like superb masterpiece, next level. I could go on forever, so I'll just stop now. More like yeah. superb Metroid. Yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, Tom. What, what what do you think about Super Metroid? Uh, this one, I don't have as many memories as the other ones because it's been a while. But I do remember on the music note, some of the boss music. It's like really not too many notes. Uh, it's really like you against them uh i think uh really uh sent that delivers that sense of isolation uh quickly though the intro to super metroid is fantastic uh mm-hmm. with um some of the sprite rotation effects going on and the timer just to give you a taste of the game before uh you know putting you into the main game uh that was something great that was done later too in metroid prime so it kind of laid the groundwork later on that they could look back on. Um, and huge step. I love the parallax fog effects and stuff in the world. Uh, I loved running super fast through things. Uh, just a huge step up over the original Metroid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, seriously. it's It feels like a dream, kind of. Like, that's exactly what the game feels like. Kind of like a scary dream, not one like, a, not necessarily like a nightmare, but it's just one of those dreams where it's like, oh, that was weird. But I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's definitely, I mean, it's kind of a fitting uh, feeling for yeah, a game that was inspired by, you know, Aliens again, or Alien. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I, I, I think as someone was saying earlier, like this game perhaps best captures that atmosphere, particularly with like how big the world is and how deep you go underground. Like it just feels increasingly isolation, uh, isolated as you, you know, keep exploring the game or the environment. And that's a, it's it's a cool but unsettling feeling, and it's something you don't get too often in games. You know, particularly with how the music and visuals complement that. Um, it's all very well done, and even from the get go, like there's really no like music on the title screen. Like it's all like very atmospheric sounding and creepy. You just hear like the, the cries of like a Metroid, and uh, and then also even how like when you land on 
Brinstar, right? Brin yeah. Zebes. Like, yeah, like, uh, sorry. Uh, the planet is Zebes. But the Zebes, that's thanks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Zebes. Uh, you get like the whole lightning, the whole thunderstorm thing, which reminds me of, a little bit of a link to the past. And that's always a great way to just kind of like immerse you, I think, in a game. Like, here's a thunderstorm. This is a, it's a dangerous place. Watch out. She's in um, a metal suit. <laughs> <laughs> good boy. Yeah, like oh my goodness, not Breath of the Wild physics. We'd be screwed here. <laughs> yeah. uh, think, and then yeah, and another thing too is like the bosses are like huge in this game. Like they're intimidating. They're they're scary. And I think like playing through Fusion, I'm not ha having anywhere near as much trouble with them as I did in Super Metroid. Like those guys were tough. They were scary. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, that, that just added to the feeling. This is a very dangerous world, you know. And uh, and that only makes a sense of isolation you have uh, even more affecting so yeah super metroid is such like a such a well done game in that sense the only thing that uh that still weirds me out about the 2d metric games at all that i just don't understand is the is how, how do those blocks work like when you bomb a block and it disappears and it comes back like what's what how what, what goes on there <laughs> how do they spawn back from nothing bird magic <laughs> you create a hole chozo <laughs> magic yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah this planet is like the beach in old except time is in reverse so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I half understand that. <laughs> oh man, you guys need to watch old. It's a bad movie. Anyway, next thing. All right. <laughs> so after Super Metroid, we had I think what was it an eight year gap before mm -hmm. we had any other Metroids at all. Yep. And then we get two Metroids I think the same day. Yep. Being uh being the first entry in the 3D series being Metroid Prime, but we also get uh, another new uh, another uh, new game in the 2D line being Metroid Fusion, which that's wild. Like, launching two major installments in your series you've neglected for eight years, it's kind of a baller move, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, um, unfortunately for people like me, it meant I just ignored one of them, being Fusion, and I was all in on the Metroid Prime train, but we'll get to that soon enough. Let's finish up the uh, the Metroid line, uh, the 2D Metroid line for now. Uh, did did everyone here, or who, who all played Metroid Fusion when it came out? Oh, not when nice. it came out. No, no. Okay, well then we'll start with Tom then. This is something Tom actually did. <laughs> so Tom, do you remember what it was like playing a new 2D Metroid at the time? And It was... You know, it's a bit different than uh, Super Metroid in that, you know, the sprites look a bit different for the smaller screen. Uh, it was quite something to have Adam always talking to you and that narrative going on. Uh, yeah, that was the Adam most thoughts. memorable part, I would say, for <laughs> sure. And to have an enemy chasing you down, like, it's different than being isolated because not only... Are you kind of isolated, but you have You're a friend, friend who wants to <laughs> kill you, <laughs> and you're powerless. There's nothing in a game, nothing quite like in a game where you can't do anything, like a feeling of weakness. So that was the main memories at the time. Uh, I also played it on the original Game Boy Advance, so the lighting was terrible most of the time, but <laughs> uh, it was an um, interesting step in the series with the narrative going on, I would say for sure. Mm -hmm. And the X parasite, you know, kind of taking over everything. It's like a, a different creepiness to that game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a very different kind of creepiness. Like, um, like it's weird because that game doesn't really have the same sort of eerie melancholiness that Super Metroid had, but it also has some way out there terrifying moments. Like Neo Ridley, for example. It's just oh, like, no. okay, I'm about to fight Ridley, and here comes this thing with big, huge eyes and, like, a, a giant ma maniacal scream, and you're just like, <laughs> the, what the heck? <laughs> the screams on the GBA are those, like, hearable images. You just see a screenshot, and you hear the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and Nightmare. Let's not forget about Nightmare. Yeah, I remember Nightmare. Na what the heck? What's that thing? Oh, my like gosh. How I like how Joey mentioned uh, Nightmares earlier, and now we have a literal Nightmare. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Right. He comes back another game, round, but he's not so If we can avoid too many spoilers, that'd be awesome, but if we have to, that's fine. So when so. Samus <laughs> dies... <laughs> oh my and god. And the ex-parasite takes her back, but... <laughs> the As she's going up to heaven, the ex-parasite comes in... I'm just kidding. It's okay, but, it's only yeah, a dream. There's, it was only <laughs> right. Metrofusion was all a dream. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine? Nightmare boss. <laughs> oh man, watch. Metroid Dread's gonna end, and the entire timeline was a dream. Oh, oh so no, that would just wake up oh, beside God. Metroid or wake up beside Mario at the end of Mario Two. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, yeah. Mario RPG. <laughs> so Metroid Fusion, I think, might be the most most unique of the 2D Metroids, or certainly the most different feeling because you're mm -hmm. in like a single like man-made location, being the spaceship, as far as I'm aware, unless there's a twist mm -hmm. at the end. 
and uh, and like you have, yeah, you are accompanied by this character being Adam, the computer, which we later get more details on via you know Metroid Other M. And it's interesting how similar the two games are now playing Fusion after having played Met Other M, where that game also took place on a spaceship. Also had, you know, it, you find out who Adam is and is giving you... And it basically tells you what to do throughout the entirety of both games. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so Fusion is a more driven experience, I think, a more, or maybe a more guided experience. And I think for some people, they may prefer that, like you always have like an objective in mind. For me, like I'm enjoying Fusion well enough, but I, I'm also finding it a little bit too handholdy. I, I don't like like whenever someone whenever I'm being told what to do, then it feels like work. Whereas right. before in previous games, it felt like I was exploring, I was uncovering everything. Whereas here's like go here. I'm like, well, I don't want to do it now. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, and it just takes away a little bit from the feel, particularly the fact that you know you do have the map by and large most of the time, and it just kind of feels like you're just making headway then into your task. So I feel like that does chip away a little bit at like so much of what I liked about Super Metroid, which was the atmosphere and the, the feeling of exploration. On the other hand, it's less frustrating too. I'm not finding myself really getting stuck all that often, but then as a result, as I said earlier, I'm not finding myself having to think all that hard, most of it. But there are things that the game does really well that I like. I just encountered, uh, the, I had just had the first proper encounter with, was it SAX? Yes. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, last night. And finally, I, I thought, so my understanding of the game was that I thought the whole game revolved around the SAX encounter, so I was wondering when it was finally going to happen. I'm, I feel like I'm pretty deep into the game. I'm only now having my first one. I'm like, oh, this is cool. And I got destroyed by her <laughs> the first yeah. time um, until I got stuck in that little, uh, uh, like, uh, ball yeah. area. Anyways, yeah. um, so I finally got past her and or it, and I'm excited to see what unravels from here. So, yeah, the atmosphere is different in this game. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not as isolating, but you now have, like, what is essentially a proper alien creature now that you have to avoid. And that's kind of cool, you know? So, and that seems... And again, we see how that's going to play into Metroid Dread, obviously, as Sakamoto himself has has said. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. I think what works about that, though, is... uh, Well, I always say to people, if you're going to play Fusion, play either Zero Mission or Super Metroid first. Because you need to play those games to understand how powerful Samus really is to understand how powerless you are in Fusion and how dangerous the SAX is because it's mimicking... Samus at that full power, that full mm-hmm. power that we got to experience and we got to blast through hallways, literally just run through blocks and walls and enemies and just, you know, completely eviscerate everything in our path. And now to take all that away, give it to the enemy, have it hunt you down and you have to run. Um, it's it's a very powerful experience. But I think sort of that more handholdy guided experience lends itself well to being a, a portable game, unlike Super Metroid, which mm-hmm. is a home console release. Um, So I think it works well in that sort of like short gameplay spurts where you say like if you're Super Metroid, you're probably going to play longer sessions. uh, Whereas, you know, if you're playing just like in the car or on the go somewhere and then you put it down for a while and you forget where you're going, like that that would kind of make the experience fall apart. But I think what works best about this, and it's only, I would say minor spoilers, probably nothing you don't know already, is you get to a point in the game where you know Samus's agency is is lost throughout most of the the first portion of the game because you're having to take orders, you have no power-ups. And so that sort of plays into the story and the atmosphere there. And as the game goes on, you know, you slowly reclaim your agency, you find these power-ups and you actually have to basically start disobeying orders. And it's the only way to progress is to go against what you're being told to do. And I find that as a really interesting storytelling mechanic because it doesn't the game doesn't say don't listen go out of, off the beaten path and explore stuff. You just have to do it and figure that out yourself. And Darn it, I a... wish I had played farther now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, I think that's where Fusion uh, basically trumps over Other M because that sort of, that feeling of reclaiming your agency as you get stronger through the game is incredibly, um, like it's this incredible payoff. It's really satisfying to do. And I think that's, that's where I would say, you know, I don't think Other M's as bad as people say it is. But I think that's where other M, M felt, falls short compared to Fusion because you have this Samus who's this really strong character. Uh, she, I mean, I doubt she likes taking orders as much as I do, right? <laughs> so like, I, I I don't like taking orders. I don't like being told what to do in my games. So it's it's odds are that this character doesn't either. And so being able to just be like, screw it, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do this. They're telling me not to do this, but you know, this is the what's the right thing to do. And. Uh, it's it's it works really well in the context of this game, and I think it's it's done brilliantly. Um, 
And, and I think putting Samus in a situation like this, which is vastly different than any anything she's been into up until that point, where basically she's gotten a contract from the Federation and they just let her loose and tell her to go nuts. You know, okay, here, go to that planet, commit genocide, go have fun, <laughs> you know? And you just kind of free roam and do your thing and everything's fine. And, and and suddenly having them sort of like pull the leash and rain, try to rein her in and, uh, and use, you know, all these... I don't want to spoil the story, but, you know, try and use her and, and these different things that are happening to their own advantage um, is it's a really interesting storytelling tool. And it it makes kind of both Samus and the player kind of be like, what is this, what is with this shady government stuff going on here? What's it's uh, yeah, I, I think the story wise, it's uh, it doesn't have that isolation atmosphere that Super does, I would say, but it uh, it does its own thing and being different is cool. If every game was exactly the same. I don't think it would stand mm -hmm. the test of time as well as it does now. So, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Fusion is, uh, I do agree with your stance on the guided part, but I also think a part of the reason why it is more guided is because it's been eight years since Super Metroid, and there's <laughs> going to be a lot of people who haven't played a Metroid game, A, even, either in a long time, or B, at all. So they kind of had to, you know, make some sacrifices to, uh, to kind of make it a more guided experience. But while also appealing to the old school metroid fans which i think they found the balance perfectly i don't know one person one single person that dislikes metroid fusion for being too guided like a lot of people a lot of people say fusion's their favorite metroid game period and they're perfectly and they have perfectly valid reasons as to why but uh if you want to know my full thoughts check out my retro review coming out tomorrow or this weekend we'll see <laughs> that's right um yeah, I was going to say one thing interesting about that real quick is that is an interesting point with like, you know, it's been eight years since uh, 2D Metroid uh, and that and it is kind of complement Metroid Prime in that sense. But at the same time, you do have Metroid Prime, which mm -hmm. uh, came out the same day and uh, doesn't really do any of the things Fusion does. And I imagine a lot of people were only playing Metroid Prime, which was really hands off too. It did have a hint system, which helped, you know, find a middle ground between it that you could turn off if you wanted to. Uh, but yeah, I think that is interesting that if you, you know, if Metro Prime was your first Metro game, which is, I think it was for a lot of us, you're kind of like just diving in into the deep end right there. <laughs> so, and that's where we're going to cut it off for part one of our epic Metroid 35th anniversary discussion because we went on for a while. So stay tuned for part two as we discuss everything Metro Prime related as well as the spinoffs and other M. Yeah, there's still a fair amount to get through. And with that, thank you so much for watching. And of course, make sure to stay tuned to Game Explained for tons more on Metroid's 35th anniversary and everything else Nintendo as well. We'll catch you later. Bye, everyone.